Learning a programming language as an absolute beginner can be challenging, especially if you're trying to learn it on your own. That's exactly how I started with C Sharp, coping tutorials and attempting to build projects from scratch without fully understanding what I was doing most of the time. Now, after a lot of trial and error, I've even written a book about it. And in this video, I'll share the exact approach I would take if I were starting to learn C Sharp all over again. And what I'd highly recommend you do as well. Before even diving into C Sharp, I'd start with an introductory course on computer science and programming fundamentals. This helps you understand how computers and the internet work so you know what's happening behind the scenes when you write code. Some key topics you need to learn that are covered there are how computers process data. You've probably heard that computers only understand binaries, so zeros and ones. Even though we write code in high level languages like C Sharp, that code needs to be translated into machine language for the computer to execute. How the web works is another essential topic, learning about HTTP requests, how we send these requests to servers and how we get responses back to our browsers. At this stage, it's not about hands-on coding yet, it's about understanding the workflow so you know why you're coding, not just how. I'm not great at analogies, but think of it like learning to drive. Before you get behind the wheel, it's much better to understand how the engine works, how the pedals control speed and what the road signs mean. There are many free resources online and even if you search on YouTube, you'll find great options. One of the most popular courses is CS50 by Harvard. While it's more advanced than typical beginner courses, it's still incredibly inspiring and insightful. Looking back, taking this this course was one of the best decisions I made, which is why I strongly recommend it. Now that you understand what you're stepping into, it's time to dive into C Sharp basics. First, I'd start with syntax and core concepts like variables and data types, loops, decision-making structures, and methods. While learning these concepts, you must test what you learn in a code editor like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. So just print output to the console to see how code works in real time and test if your code output matches your expectations. You'll also learn how syntax errors appear. Then work with variables and data. Experiment with assigning values to variables, performing basic operations and observing how data changes when manipulated. You can write simple loops and conditions that count numbers for example, filter data or respond to user input to solidify everything you've learned. At this stage, you're not building actual applications yet. Instead, the goal is to become comfortable with writing, running, and understanding C Sharp code. Now that you've got a handle on the basics, it's time to dive into one of the core features of C Sharp, object-oriented programming. C Sharp is an object-oriented language, meaning it's built around the concept of objects and classes. Think of it as organizing data and behavior into reusable structures, making your code more modular, scalable, and easier to manage. Once you grasp these concepts and practice a bit, you'll be able to start building larger console applications not just printing text or performing simple calculations. No matter your end goal, whether it's web apps, games, or other types of applications, you'll need to start with console applications. They use a text-based interface for input and output operations, unlike graphical user interfaces that rely on buttons, menus, or other visual elements. Not my favorite, but hey, you can still build some cool things with them. You don't have to buy anything, but I have a C -sharp ebook called C Sharp Unlocked, which consists of 30 chapters packed with all the C Sharp insights you need, from fundamentals to advanced topics, tips, practical examples, and projects. Not only will it save you time, but it will also serve as a high quality reference guide you can use anytime. Again, you don't have to buy it, but if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. We've arrived at the final step advanced C Sharp concepts, including error handling, file I.O., generics, link, asynchronous programming, and more. Error handling ensures your program doesn't crash when something goes wrong. File I.O. or file input and output allows reading from and writing to files. 
generics, then enables writing flexible and reusable code. Link or language integrated query provides a clean and efficient way to query data and asynchronous programming allows long running tasks to execute without freezing the program. Now here's the thing, you don't need to master all of this at once. You can start learning them now, but in reality, most of these concepts will make more sense when you actually need them in a project. Some of them may seem quite advanced, especially if you haven't built a real projects yet. Even if you understand them now, you'll likely forget them without hands-on practice, so don't worry too much at this stage. At this point, if you want to get hands-on with coding, you can check out a full beginner tutorial for C-sharp, which should be on the screen. So just click on it and I'll see you there.